Now joined by the Leafs' new general manager, Brad Trey Living. Brad, you and I have known each other for a very long time, so I just wanted to ask you, are you aware you just took the general manager job in the most scrutinized city in the entire NHL? And if so, why would you do this? <laughs> I was thinking about that, Gino. First of all, we have known each other a long time. It, it's aging us. Um, <laughs> there was a little talk of that of saying, you know, I was, I was, I was gainfully unemployed and enjoying, enjoying some downtime. But I said at the press conference, all kidding aside, you know, it's the Leafs. And uh, it's different. It's special. Um, you know, every one of these jobs is, is really, really special in this league, and it's a privilege to work in the league, but it's, this one's different. And, um, the, the, you know, the opportunity, the responsibility um, to manage the Leafs is something that uh, doesn't come around every, every day. So uh, when that opportunity came and Brendan and, and the ownership uh, entrusted me with the position, um, it, was, it was a humbling day, so we're excited. You got a lot on your plate, man, right out of the gate. Austin Matthews got a no move that takes effect exactly a month from today. The last time you let a star player play out the last year of his contract, the Flames lost Johnny Goudreau for nothing. What did you learn from that experience, and what's your plan with Austin Matthews? Well, you learn there's every situation is a little bit different, right? And uh, um, I think it's important. You know, listen, I've, I've managed in the league for nine years. I've made mistakes. I've, I've, you've learned from it. And I think it's, it's in every walk of life. If I've yet to meet the, perf the person that's perfect at what they do, yet, but it's only an experience if you learn from it. And so, um, you know, the experiences I've gone through in, in, in Calgary are going to be different than the experiences we go through in Toronto. Like I said, every case is a little bit different. Austin, uh, um, you know, that's, that's part of the draw of working here, getting to work with what I think is some of the elite players in the world. And Austin is certainly that. He's, he's in the very minority of players that are, that are the very, very best on the planet here. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into contractual discussions publicly. Well, number one is to, to build a relationship. And, and, you know, for me to get to know Austin, but more importantly for Austin to get, know, to, to, get to know me and just, you know, get some face time and, and talk through some things and, just get a comfort level before we start getting into all the contract stuff. It's just to, you know, find out a little bit about each other and, and start to build that relationship. And as much as it's coming quick, we, you know, we still have some time here. So uh, we're going to get to work ASAP. And, and as you said, the to-do list, to list is long, but we're, we're excited to get after it. To your credit, though, you've shown time and again you don't mind making the hard decisions. When Matthew Kachuk came to you and said, that he wasn't going to sign for you guys long term, uh, you made the move. You made you made the best of a tough situation. What are your plans for the core four? Are there any untouchables on that list? You know what? You know what I would say is I, I'm not going to get into specifics with players. I think again, one of the one of the draws here is you've got elite talent, um, and you go you know those four guys there. You just talk about them. You got Austin. You got Mitch. You got Willie. You got John. You, know, you look at the back end with Morgan and. And then, and then, and it goes from there. There's, there's, there's a lot of good players. One of the things that I think a responsibility of me right now is, is I want to protect those players. And as I said in my, you know, as I said earlier today, you know, I'm, I'm fiercely protective of my players. But the, 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 the success or failure of our team cannot just be placed at the feet of four players. They're, they're, they're absolutely stars. And you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. But this is about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's not, it's not about two guys or three guys or four guys or five guys and, and we all just get to sit back and, and they're gonna, they, they got to do all the heavy lifting. No, we got to protect them. We got to surround them. We got to help them. Um, and, and that's what we intend to do. And, and as you do every year, whether you've been on this job, and I know Kyle, who's a good friend of mine, um, a good manager, a smart guy, um, I know his thoughts were at the end of the year, you step back, you evaluate everything, and you see how you make your team better. But just being different or the idea of being new and say, well, I'm going to throw a body in the tarmac here and, and, and to, make a, to make a headline, that's, that's not it. We're going to find ways to, to support our people, make them better, and then ultimately look at ideas to, to make our team better. And that's, that's the challenge, but that's, that's what's in front of us. When you took over the Calgary Flames, uh, you held on to Bob Hartley for a while, and it proved to be pretty successful. What's your plan and timeline with Sheldon Keith? 
Well, first of all, again, I look at this from a lens from afar. I think Sheldon's a good coach. You look at his record. Um, you look at how this team's performed. You look at the progression of the team. So all, some, of the, some of the mile markers and indicators that I use to, 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 to judge coaches. Um, he's gotten top players to check. Um, you know, you look at how this team has gotten better defensively um, over the years. So I always believe you don't know until you get behind the curtain, whether it be players, coaches, staff, you've got to get to know people. Um, and that's what I intend to do with, with Sheldon. There's no, you know, there's no master plan here. I think Sheldon's a really good coach. Um, we got to spend some time together. We got to, you know, he's, he's going to have questions for me. I'm going to have a lot of questions for him. So we're going to dig into it. Um, and it's going to be thorough. Obviously, we know the calendar, you know. We've, 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 got to, we've got to move through that. As, as I talked to you, it's one of the many issues we've got. But, um, you know, I appreciate the situation Sheldon's in right now. And, and sometimes in this business, unique situations come up. Uh, but we're going to deal with it head on. And, uh, and we're going to come to a conclusion. But, you know, a new manager and Brad coming in here isn't, you don't just, you don't just make changes for the sake of making changes. So I think we've got to make sure we make the right decision here. And I, like I said, from everything I could tell from Sheldon from afar, really good hockey coach. Now, now we've got to get together and, and, and spend some time together. You know the Toronto Maple Leaf fan base is very vocal. You know that they've been teased for years now with a team that's been terrific in the regular season and just couldn't do much at all in the playoffs. If you were speaking to them right now, what would you tell them and how long it's going to take to mold this team into a team that's ready, prepared, and successful in the regular season to becoming one that could go deep into the playoffs? Well, what I would say, Gina, was a big part of, of why I'm here is that fan base. And, and it, you know, it's, I, I was lucky and fortunate and honored to work in Calgary. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, you, you, this, this is, this is, this is it's a different level in terms of just the size, the spotlight. Um, the passion is what drives us all. You know, that's, that's what makes, you know, getting up every day um, such a great challenge. And I know when you go through tough times, it's... You, it's tough, um, but to, to the thought of getting to getting this team and getting this this fan base to the ultimate prize and, and, and reaching the mountaintop, that's what drives us. So we're gonna we're gonna work at this day and night. I, I can tell them, um, you know, we're gonna surround ourselves with the very brightest minds. Um, we're gonna we're gonna outwork people um, as best we can, and we're gonna try to make the very very best decisions that we can uh, to get this team where it rightfully belongs. And, and reach that mountaintop. It's hard. It's hard to win. Everybody's trying to do it. Um, but certainly I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the group we have, and now we, we get to work. Brad, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks, Gino. Good to talk with you.